morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God has awakened us to another bright new day with all its opportunities for pleasing Him. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. prayer begins with our opening sentence on page 32 and then continues thereafter on page 35 and following. To God, the only God, who saves us through Jesus Christ our Lord, be the glory, majesty, authority, and power which he had before time began, now and forever. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. And now we pray together. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you a worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The very nighty. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Now we come to this time when we have the opportunity to make ourselves right with God. To bring before God those things of which our consciences are afraid. Let us ask for God's forgiveness. So we pray together. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we come to our psalm, and the psalm appointed for us this morning is Psalm 71. And Psalm 71 begins on page 556 of our Books of Common Prayer. Let us recite the psalm together. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evil doer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, 
my confidence since I was young. I've been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. I have become a potent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Do not cast me off in my old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Go after him and seize him, because there is none who will save. O God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O my God. Let those who set themselves against me be put to shame and be disgraced. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. But I shall always wait in patience and shall praise you more and more. My mouth shall recount your mighty acts and saving deeds all day long, though I cannot know the number of them. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God. I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, you have taught me since I was young, and to this day I tell of your wonderful works. And now that I am old and grey-headed, O oh God, do not forsake me till I make known your strength to this generation and your power to all who are to come. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the heavens. You have done great things. Who is like you, O God? You have showed me great troubles and ad adversities, but you will restore my life and bring me up again from the deep places of the earth. You strengthen me more and more. You enfold and comfort me. Therefore, I will praise you upon the lyre for your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing to you with the harp, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will sing with joy when I pray to you, and so will my soul, which you have redeemed. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness all day long, for they are ashamed and disgraced who sought to do me harm. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And we come now to our first reading, and our first reading is taken from the book of Job. And we are reading chapter 28, verses 1 to 28. Job 28, verses 1 to 28. Surely there is a mine for silver and a place for gold to be refined. Iron is taken out of the earth and copper is smelted from ore. Miners put an end to darkness and search out to the farthest bound the ore in gloom and deep darkness. They open shafts in a valley away from human habitation. They are forgotten by travelers. They sway suspended, remote from people. As for the earth, out of it comes bread, but underneath it is turned up as by fire. Its stones are the place of sapphires, and its dust contains gold. The path no bird of prey knows, and the falcon's eye has not seen it. The proud wild animals have not trodden it. The lion has not passed over it. They put their hand to the flinty rock and overturn mountains by the roots. They cut out channels in the rocks. The eyes see every precious thing. The sources of the rivers they probe. Hidden things they bring to light. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Mortals do not know the way to it, and it is not found in the land of the living. The deep says, It is not in me, and the sea says, It is not with me. It cannot be bought for gold, and silver cannot be weighed out as its price. It cannot be valued in the gold of Ophir, 
in precious onyx or sapphire. Gold and glass cannot equal it, nor can it be exchanged for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of crystal. The price of wisdom is above pearls. The chrysolite of Ethiopia cannot compare with it, nor can it be valued in pure gold. Where then does wisdom come from? And where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all living and concealed from the birds of the air. Abaddon and Death say, we have heard a rumor of it with our ears. God understands the way to it, and he knows its place. For he looks to the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he gave to the wind its weight and apportioned out the waters by measure, when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the thunderbolt, then he saw it and declared it. He established it and searched it out. And he said to humankind, Truly the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. And we continue with our canticle, The Song to the Lamb, on page 53 of our Books of Common Prayer. Spender and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Now we come to our second reading, and our second reading is taken from the Gospel of John. And we're reading John chapter 12, verses 27 to 36a. Jesus continued, Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of the light. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, our Lord. Search, Lord, pure as the white and snow. Search, Lord, for the 
There's no effect a bit on this passage that we just read from John's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 27 to 36a. In the context, of course, of this passage is that Jesus' time is drawing near. He's in Jerusalem. It's Passover time. He's the lamb that is to be sacrificed, the new Passover lamb. So just a matter of days are ahead before Jesus will be crucified. And so John is telling us, you know, that Jesus is troubled. Jesus himself says, now my soul is troubled. My soul is troubled. Jesus, of course, is, his mind is all on the task that he has come to accomplish the task that the Father gave to him, the fact that he emptied himself and is now in human form. So Jesus is fully human. It is a human being that he will sacrifice himself. Jesus is troubled. He's naturally concerned about fulfilling his task. You know, he's concerned about what he will have to endure in doing this. The pain, the suffering, the humiliation, and even the sense of the abandonment, abandonment of God as he you know, suffers on the cross. So Jesus' mind is very much on all he will have to endure and you know, his ability to enjoy it. How will that happen? And so Jesus, despite being troubled, is saying, Father, shall I say, shall I say, Father, save me from this, from this hour? Not at all. Jesus is you know, fully resolute that he will subject himself. He's not going to back out, as we say in Trinidad. He's readying himself fully, but he needs the Father. Like, we need the Father, you know difficult situations. And so he goes to the Father. Father, glorify your name. Glorify your name. Help me, Lord, to have the strength and the courage to undergo all the excruciating pain, all that I have to undergo. You, Father, are the one who will give me the strength and the courage that I will in the end glorify your name. And of course, Jesus receives that reassurance from the Father. I, the voice from heaven says, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. So Jesus' prayer that God will be with him to help him, to enable him to, to endure all he has to endure to the very end and so bring glory to the Father. The Father is assuring him, yes, indeed. My name will be glorified. I will glorify it. I will do as you ask. Your prayer is answered. Jesus is not about to, to ask to be relieved. Rather, he asks for the strength and courage to endure, to fulfill his mission. And of course, um, as we read, the code standing there, heard it and said that it was thunder. Of course, the very voice of God, <laughs> it, it seems to the crowd, you know, that it's thunder. But it adds, of course, to that whole you know, atmosphere, you know, surrounding uh, Jesus as he is, is there speaking and people are hearing. As far as they're concerned, something is happening, something extraordinary is happening. Father, glorify your name through what I will do. You know, and the Father giving him that reassurance, I have glorified it and I will glorify it 
again in that voice, that thunderous voice that comes from heaven. So by accomplishing this mission on the cross, of course, Jesus will attain the purpose of atoning for the sins of humankind, the sins of you and I. You know, to remove that stranglehold that the evil one has on us. The, you know, we, we, we just, you know, are victims. We fall into sin because this evil one is able, you know, to hold us. But Jesus has come and he will accomplish his mission. That mission of saving us from the consequences of our sin. From that stranglehold that the evil one may have over us. That stranglehold will be broken. And we will be set free, as it were, from the bondage and the consequences of sin. From, you know, from that alienation from God, from God that sin brings. Indeed, you know, God's plan for us has always been that we would have that right relationship with him. And Jesus has come to you know, to make it possible to break that stronghold of the evil one has on us through sin and set us free to have that right relationship with the God who made us for himself. And so Jesus uh, continues, Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. So yes, all his influence, the ruler of this world, the evil one, the Satan, his evil influence will be broken. He will literally and figuratively, figuratively for believers, he will, he will be a cipher, he will be, he'll have no influence, he'll be driven out of his influence on our lives. So, Jesus was is saying, now, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Of course, we know Jesus will be crucified. And when he's lifted up on that cross, that's the act by which Jesus will liberate us all and draw us all to himself and into that relationship with the Father. That death on the cross will be our salvation. We will be set free from the consequences and bondage of our sin. So Jesus has consented. Jesus is stealing himself up even now for that great task, a matter of days ahead, that he will have to undergo. And of course, what is happening here is that people are hearing. People are hearing. I when. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. The crowd, of course, is puzzled. They do not understand. We have heard from the Lord that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Jesus, of course, is talking about himself, the Son of Man. It is a term that it was in the, in the Old Testament. Maybe they should have heard of it, but they can't understand. We we know, you know, we know about the Messiah and who is this Son of Man? It's like something very new to them. Who is the Son of Man that Jesus is talking about? It is very puzzling to them. And Jesus, of course, is um, you know, they do not understand. Jesus realizes that the crowd simply do not understand. But what does Jesus say? Let's read the passage. Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. 
So Jesus is giving them some reassurance. Yes, you don't understand, but in time, you know, if you stick to it, and I'm here, Jesus presumably was referring to himself, I will be here a little longer. And if you stick with it and follow, you will understand. You, you, you are not able to see and put everything together. You know, with Jesus, of course, the disciples, well, we, we, we always find they're always a little bit slow. And then in this case, it's wider circle than the disciples. It's, it's the whole you know, crowd, those who are around. And the level of understanding is not what it ought to be. And some of the things Jesus is saying is that it's confusing. They don't understand the Son of Man. And as Jesus says, Son of Man, there's a sense that he may be talking about himself. You know, what is really happening here? We know about the Messiah who is to come. And there's confusion. But Jesus says, you know, I am going to be here a little while longer. Walk while you have light. While I'm here, you you, you come into this light, my light. And you probably come and you'll come to a better understanding. Stick with it. I suspect it. It's very much the same with us. There are many things, you know, we, we don't quite understand. But we have to, 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 to reflect on it and seek God's guidance so we can, you know, fill in that whole picture, what God really wants of us, what, it, what God desires of us, how we are called to respond in particular uh, situations. You know, we need to have a, you know, just a, a, a good overview of, the, of what God really desires of us, what God wants of us. Um, in this life. God's love in sending his son. I mean, you know the big picture. Sometimes the details are not even necessary. But at least that general picture of the God who made us for himself and so loved the world that he sent his son. The only one who would, would have been able you know, to give his life an atonement for our sins that we might then be freed from the consequences of our sin and able in the end to find our place with God, the God who made us for himself. And so we need to have a clear understanding and we pray that we will, as Jesus said, you know, in, his, in essence he was saying to the crowd, you stick with it, you know, and seek to understand, you know, if you walk in darkness, you do not know where you are going. But while you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of the light. So by faith, as we stick to it, we will, our eyes will be opened, we will become children of the light, and our understanding will grow as we you know, focus, and as we commit ourselves to to, to that deeper knowledge of God and what God has in mind, what God's intention is for us, what God's plan is for us. So may we be enlightened, may we be enlightened people who may our eyes be opened, you know, may we become children of the light, that we might live like children of the light and in the end, of course, attain to that place that God has in store for us, the reason why he sent his son into the world, to atone for our sins by death on the cross, that we might find ultimately that place he has in store for us. The Lord be with you. Such love, no other love like you, still in my restlessness. Such love,
We continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 42 of our Books of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray together the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now we continue with our collect for today. And so we turn to page 178 of our Books of Common Prayer. And pray together the, the collect for proper 19. Let us pray. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue in prayer. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence be with us to its close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good work we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit that we may seek in everything to know your will and knowing it may gladly perform it to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayer. O oh God, our Father, you have bidden light to shine out of darkness, and have awakened us again to praise your goodness and to seek your grace. Make us children of the light and of the day, that our lives being open to your glory, we may shine as lights in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Continue to pray. We pray for God's people in every part of this world. We pray especially for persons who live in countries where life is no bed of roses, where there is suffering and pain in places of war and fighting and destruction, in places of natural disasters, in places where the despotic regime oppressed the people. In all those places, Lord, we pray for your hand of courage and strength to be upon them. We pray especially, Lord, in those places for those who are believers, that, Lord, they would shine like true lights in the environment, be sources of hope and strength and encouragement for those who, all those who are suffering. We pray for your church worldwide, for all who are ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray, Lord, that their lives will be examples of their teaching, that they will be sources of your hope and help wherever they may be, and bring others to faith as well. Today we pray for the Anglican Communion worldwide, for the Most Reverend Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, for all the primates of our various regions in our communion. We pray for our own church, the church in the province of the West Indies, for Howard, our Archbishop, also Bishop of Jamaica. And we pray for all our bishops in the various dioceses of our region or province, the church in the province of the West Indies. We lift up especially today our own Bishop Claude, 
You pray for his family, that your hand will be upon them. We pray for your continued guidance and inspiration, Lord, for health and strength and wisdom as he seeks to lead the church in this place. We pray for the clergy in all the parishes in which they serve your people. We pray that there will be sources of your guidance and inspiration, that they will bring others to a knowledge of you, Lord, that they will be able to inspire their people to use their resources to bring help and encouragement and hope to your people. We continue to pray for this country of ours, for President or Prime Minister, members of Parliament, ministers of government, all those in positions of public trust and authority. We pray your particular inspiration and guidance in their decision making. May they always consider the good of all in the decisions that they make. We pray for those who deliver all kinds of services, that they, Lord, will recognize that they are truly serving people. And that is their job, and that they would take this as a vocation, this service as a vocation, so that people will get the very best that the country has to offer. And so we lift up our civil servants, we lift up our judiciary, we lift up our health system, we lift, we lift up our teaching service, we lift up even our private sector in all its its areas of service for all who are called, Lord, in their in their lives, in their work to bring, to deliver services to people. We pray that their emphasis would be on helping and making life easier for others. And we pray, Lord, that our people, as a result, would benefit from all that the country has to offer. We pray for the families of our nation, Father, that you will bless the homes in which they live, inspire the parents with wisdom as they seek to bring up their children, give them courage and patience and understanding. For all those who deal with our, our children, teachers you know, in our various schools, others who work with children in their various capacities, we pray that all will be imbued with that wisdom which will enable them to understand and to seek to find ways in which they will help our children to grow to their fullest potential. Father, we lift up those young people who are under negative influences, those who have been encouraged into crime and into other activities where the, 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 the natural gifts are just being wasted. Father, we pray for those young people in those circumstances. Touch the hearts of those who are misleading our young people. Lord, we pray that you will rescue them from the evil influences. We continue to pray for those who are in all kinds of need, who are weakened to great need today, those who are sick and are crying out for healing, those who mourn the loss of loved ones, people in all kinds of situations of need, those who do not know where the next meal will come from, families who cannot provide a meal today for their children, our senior citizens who need our, our attention and care, Father, Open our eyes and make us sensitive to the needs of others. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.